G'day YouTubers, it's Harry Houdini here in Australia and it's a bloody hot day today. I think it must be up in the 90s and it's uh, my afternoon after I finish my daily work but it's still stinking and I've got the fan on in the background, that's that noise you can hear probably. And uh, it's too bloody hot for painting. It's too hot to use CA glue which is what I need to do with some photo etch. I've got nothing left to glue because my kits are all assembled waiting painting and weathering and I've got some photo etch to put on. So I thought, I really just want to cut and glue something, well, cement something with some plastic glue. And I've got this present from Ennis. So, before I start chopping it up and building it, which I'm going to thoroughly enjoy from all the accounts that I've seen online, because tons of people have done reviews on this, and it's a rip snorter. But I'll go through the kit, and I'll show you what's in the box, because I'm excited to open this and... I'd like to share it with you. Alrighty, let's have a look at this kit then, okay? Now it's from Trumpeter, which is one of my uh, favourite uh, favorite makes, because usually they go together like a dream, at least all the ones I've built. And um, the detail's good, and there's not much flash or rubbish, and you just basically, they fall together. My, my graph speed, boom, it just fell together, it was so easy. Um, the other Trumpeter things I've had, the uh, SU-152, so easy. Trumpeter, I have found, in my experience, to be well researched, well made, instructions, you can just follow them. It's not like a dragon kit where it's, oh god, you got to check every step of the way. It's not like a Tamiya kit where it's, it's nicely detailed, it's beautiful, but there's not a lot of parts. And it's, you know, Trumpeter seems to me to be a good compromise. Not as complicated as Dragon, not as simple as Tamiya, although I know there are some good Tamiya kits out there, I'm just yet to build them. But for me, I've really enjoyed the trumpeter kits that I've built. So let's see if this one is the same. So, um, what's the box got? Beautiful box art, right? Really love that. And um, did a bit of research myself online and managed to watch a few YouTube clips. And there's some footage of these actual, these suckers running around in the snow. They, they really do look interesting. So, um, let's, uh, well, let's see what else is in the box. Not much, you know, usual sort of stuff. Trumpet doesn't really put much on the sides. It's just a few picks and a few things, and they kind of show off their, their PE there, and, you know, and there's just a, a bit of blurb. So who cares? And the bottom of them is invariably white, which is really good if you watch my lighting video, because you can use it to reflect. <laughs> Anyhow, none of that. Let's just get into the box. Let's get to the good stuff. So, in the box, um, let's look at the instructions. And one of the first things that pops out, which I really like about Trumpeter, is you get this really nice, and all of them have got this, coloured paint guide, right? None of this, everything's in blue and shades and you've got to figure it all out. You can see the colours, there they are. Having said that though, they've kind of made a few mistakes down here. They've actually used the wrong colour code for um, what colours things are, but it doesn't really matter because in the, in the, um, the artwork there, you can clearly see what needs to be done. And there's not a lot to this one anyway. Alright, so that's the colour chart. Instructions. Typical trumpeter instructions. They're clear, they're concise, and they're easy to read. At least I think so. You, um, every kit I've built comes with a spray mat. Alright, and all the parts are on there. They're all numbered. It's, it's all there ready to go. It's lovely. Alright, it's... Um, it's nothing. Now there's not much to this, it's only about half a dozen frets and a bit of PE, you know, some decals, not much to it. There are figures though, and we'll get to that in a sec. Now, instructions, again, another reason I like Trumpeter, they're clear, they're easy to follow. And if it's anything like the other kits I've built, you can do exactly what they say, in the order that they say, and it will go together. And although it is handy to look ahead, like with any kit, you look ahead and see if there's any traps. I generally don't find them with Trumpeter, at least with the kits I've built. So I'm looking forward to this one. I reckon it'll be just as easy. There's not much to it. Build the engine. Bang. That's done. You know, then I can go and paint it. Build the hull. Bang. That's done. Okay. And then I can basically paint the inside of it. Nice steps. In fact, they even recommend that. They've even got that in there. They say, at this stage, go on, paint the inside. See? Really nice. Nice logical order. 
So there you go, there's your motor, and they, you know, they've got it all worked out. And then your seats go in, all right? And then they're doing the dash and um, basically the windshield and, uh, and those sort of things. And again, it's a good order. It's, it's logical, it makes sense, it's easy to follow. And then all the sub-assemblies go in, and then you start on some of the external things here. You've got the, um, basically the outriggers there, which the skis are going to go on. And then you've got that snappy little bloody propeller that's going to go at the back there. That's going to be fun. I'm going to enjoy painting that. I'm going to really try for a wood effect on that. And um, following on some more of the, um, the little structures around there, the um, guards to protect the, um, well, to not protect the propeller, really protect people from getting hit by it. You know, these little uh, protection bars here. And then in goes the machine gun. And off to the side here, very clear and very easy to follow is the instructions on how to fit the PE and how to build the machine gun. Okay, And then again, um, they've done the same thing here with the instructions for the skis. Easy, simple, and it all goes together in a nice logical order. I love these, these kits. And then they've got the, um, the crew, the two little figures. And they're nicely sort of marked out with what colours are what and what goes where. But I'll do some research and I'll um, I'll sort of just double check that's what I want to do, but usually they're pretty spot on. I've um, been really impressed with Trumpeter. So, instructions don't look hard. It's a pretty simple kit, really, and again, Trumpeter makes it so easy. So let's have a look at some of the parts, shall we? Now, we'll start with this. This is two sprues. They're both identical, by the looks of things. Here we go, we're opening it up. The Virgin has been popped. <laughs> Oops, being dirty again. So I'm trying a new thing here. I'm going to try and do that so you can see the detail. Does that work? Do you like that? I don't know. Probably good if it wasn't wobbling. Can't help that. So there you go. There's the um, the skis. There's a pair of skis. There's a seat, and there's some of the um, bits and pieces that go with that. Now I can't see any flash. There's usually no injector pin marks, or if they are, they're in hidden spots, or I've never really had any problems with Trumpeter. They're usually well thought out kits. And the plastic's always pretty good quality, easy to cut, easy to sand. Look, you know, I really like what these guys do. So that's skis. We've got two of those, so I don't need to show you the second one. Same again, okay? Just wind back and watch the other part again. You really need to see it twice. Okay, what else have we got now? Isn't this lovely? Right? You see what's going on there? I know you can't see the parts. That's because they put in these lovely little bits of um, protection plastic. All right? And that protects all the tiny little parts. I've seen this in so many trumpeter kits. If they've got a fiddly little fine part, they put in a little more for it. So even though it's sitting there in the box and it's banging against all the other sprues, and even though every bag is individually wrapped, you still have your tiny parts protected. So they won't be falling off and floating around inside the box. I love that. I really love that. That is, thinking ahead and making sure the quality um, is there for you. Right, so we will gently peel that off because I'll put that back on to protect those parts while I build this. Because it's a good idea. So bear with me. I'm fumbling away here. I probably would have been easier just to cut that, wouldn't it? Yeah, there we go. Ah, uh, look, you know, it's been a hot day. It's been a hot day. So, woohoo, here we go. There's lots of little widgets and fiddly things here. Let's see what I can show you. Let's see what I can show you. Okay, so. Look at all those lovely little parts. Can you see how clean they are? There's tiny little details there. There's little stays and the, the prop looks really nice. And all the tiny little parts are um, beautifully rendered. No flash. The um, spray points, we're going to cut them. Most of them look pretty logical and they look like they'll cut away nice and easily without you having to bugger up the part. Nice kit. Really is. Really is nice. It should be a joy to build. We'll find out. Alright, so I'm going to put those away carefully back in their little condom here <laughs> so that they don't get pregnant. We don't want that. We don't want any pollination on our sprues. <laughs> right, well, moving right along. I'll sort that out later. 
Let me protect it for now. Now, here's some interesting stuff. This is the sides. This is the hull. And it's really such a lovely little thing. It's almost Christmassy, you know? I could fill this thing up with presents and put Santa Claus in it, I think. He, he'd be chuffed riding around in one of these. Yeah, maybe that's what I'll do. I'm, I'm half inclined to make a diorama because it wouldn't be that hard to do a little bit of snow. And that'd be lovely sitting here in 40 degree, like 110 degree temperature heat here in Australia in the middle of bloody summer. You know, Christmas Day here, we're not, we're not bloody making eggnog and, and um, you know, sitting around watching the snow. We're usually stripped off down the beach having a barbecue because that's frickin' hot. <laughs> you know, look at that. Those pieces look lovely. You know, look at this, um, oops, sorry. This is, I'm trying a new thing here. Trying a new thing and I'm a bit wobbly. Um, look at this radiator. Look, I don't know if it'll pick it up. Look how detailed that is. I, I don't know if it stayed in focus. But look, it, um, it really does look nice. And both sides too. I mean, the interior of the sled is beautifully detailed as well. And all the cut points look nice and easy to remove things from the sprue. And this should be a joy to build. At least I hope so. By all accounts, it's looking good so far. It really is to my wonky old eyes. Although I do have my extra strong reading glasses on. That's the beauty of you not having my face in this. I can wear my reading glasses. Now, the figures, oh, we'll have a look at those. All right. let's, let's crack the little bastards open and let's have a look at their bloody noggins. Hey? Why bloody not? Let's have our butcher's chook. We'll just do one, because I'm sure they're both the same quality. So, again, using this newly developed sprueing method. What do you think of that? Nice and clean. Okay. Unlike some of the Tamiya kits I built where the kit wasn't too bad, and then you got to the figures, and oh my goodness, where did they get them from? Covered in flash, soft as all buggery, you know, mould marks for either side that you have to sand off. Let me have a look and see if there's any edge mould marks. None. Absolutely none. I don't know if the camera will pick it up. I can't see any at all. They look like you could basically just cut that off the sprue, glue it together and you have got a nice little figure ready for painting. So isn't that good? Now the other one's similar but different. We won't open him, but basically, you know, he's another figure. And he's the same quality. And again, you know, there's no mould overlap that I can see that's going to need sanding. It, um, it all looks very clean and it's beautifully detailed. I don't know if we saw the, um, the jacket. I don't know if it'll, be, it'll pick up. See if it'll focus. Oh, we lost, we lost a little illumination. Can I focus on that? Don't know. But that is very nice. All right. That um, that jacket has got tons of detail in it. Absolutely tons of detail. I probably lost my entire focal length there. Oh, here we go. Machine gun. The only nasty bit of armament on it. <laughs> oh, well, it's, you know, you got to have a machine gun. It's, it's armour. It's got to have something that shoots somebody. Well, it's protection. Okay? It's all about self-defence. So, is that going to show up? Hopefully it does. How's that look? Looks pretty good to me. You know, that's, that's up there with a little Dragon MG, I think. Alright? You may differ in your opinion, but I think that's pretty close to a Dragon MG in quality. I like it. And it'll certainly be good enough for this snowy little kit that I'm building. That will be the other side. Oh, it's probably going to be easier to, to show you that side. There's even more detail. Alright, so there again. You know? Very nice. Very clean. Should, um, should build up really well. Really well. So what have I left? Well, there's not much in the way of decals. Um, I could get them out, but really they're not that inspiring. There's just a couple of... Um, a couple of red crosses and a, and a, and a German, well, sorry, a Russian wersh. Probably says stupid imperialist. I don't know. I don't speak Russian. Maybe you know what it says. Maybe you can decipher that for me and let me know in the comments. Just please comment, you know. And there's a few clear parts. There's a windshield and, oh, there's a headlamp. There's a headlamp and a windshield there, okay? And I won't get those out, I don't want to grubby those up for now. But they look pretty clean. Going by other kits I've built from these guys, the uh, clear parts are, you know, fairly good. PE, now, sometimes their PE can be a bit thick. 
But this is just for the MG. It's just a little shield. And you get two of them, in case you bugger one up, I suppose. So um, I'm not going to worry too much about that. It, it probably is a little bit thick, but that might work nicely with the scale of the kit. Either way, it's just nice to have a little bit of PE. And I think sometimes they just they just put a bit in to kind of keep the quality up there and say, look, there's PE in this kit, because then everyone goes, oh, wow, it must be good. <laughs> so there you go. That's, that's, that's everything. That's, that's the whole shebang. It's all there in that box. And um, I'm pretty excited, and I'm going to start gluing this together today. I'm not going to wait. No, no, no. Big hot day, and I'll glue some plastic together. Well, what did you think of that? It's a great little kit, isn't it? It really is. It's so unusual, but it's so interesting, and it looks like it'll build together so easily. So, um, you guys just bugger off, because I'm going to spend the rest of my afternoon gluing this sucker together. Um, I'll, I'll videotape some of it, but um, basically, for now, that's it. So, piss off. Go and do what you've got to do. Go and build something, alrighty? Okay, it's goodbye from Australia, and it's Huru from Harry Houdini. Mm -hmm.